When a large-scale emergency strikes a community like the Fort McMurray wildfire, it takes the efforts of all different types of emergency personnel and agencies to manage the crisis. Now there's a team centered in Lloydminster that aims to bring together experts on crisis management from across the region. Brian Lentz has more on the Alberta and Saskatchewan Incident Response Team. In the last 16 years, you know, 14 of those years, we've had a major event happen. In the event of a major disaster, ASSIST hopes to bridge the gap for communities who struggle to cope, bringing the expertise of the entire region to bear. When the smaller municipalities can't handle that incident, it's just that plan B. It's that when, when you don't have enough people uh, there, there's another group that will come in. And not only just individuals that are, have the interest in it, but actually are trained and, and would know on how to run that. But ASSIST isn't boots on the ground at the front lines. They look at an emergency from the broader perspective and coordinate efforts from multiple agencies. The Emergency Operations Centre manages the emergency as a whole. It doesn't only look at the fire, it might look at social services, it might be that reception centres being set up, it might mean public works is, is doing some work, it might mean that the power company is doing some work. Tichkowski presented on the benefits of ASSIST during the Bordering on Disasters conference in Lloydminster, and attendees see the value in creating a regional emergency response team. So that we can improve our response to catastrophic incidents such as Fort Mac or you know any of those large-scale disasters that involve multi-agencies and multi-jurisdictions, just to improve communications, information sharing, and just teamwork in general. Though ASSIST isn't the first regional emergency management agency in Alberta, it's the only one independent from a municipality and focused on serving communities on both sides of the border city. Disasters have no borders. Fort Mac was a great example. It didn't have a border. It walked right into Saskatchewan and continued to go on. Our goal is for September of 2018 um, to be trained and ready to respond to where we'll tell everybody across that we're ready, you need us, for Plan B, we're there. The Alberta and Saskatchewan Incident Response Team is currently looking for more members to join its ranks and help provide greater service to the region. Brian Lentz, Newcap News. And it's that time of the year again. Cupcakes for a Cause is celebrating its 10th year of supporting the Lloydminster Region Health Foundation. This year, $2 from each six-pack and 50 cents from every duo of cupcakes will be donated to the mammography program at the Lloydminster Hospital in support of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mammography and in particular um, healthcare for women is really important obviously to us as a cooperative and, and to our membership. Um, so Cupcakes for the Cause is just one way that we can show that support to, uh, to that group. The fundraiser has helped support various health-related initiatives and programs over the years. Cupcakes for the Cause in its lifespan has raised almost $15,000 for local health care initiatives. So that's something we're very proud of and something that we're very excited to supersede with this uh, 10th anniversary promotion. The cupcakes are available at the Co-op Marketplace, the Neil Berg Grocery Store, all three gas bars and the Fuel Centre on Highway 16 West. The fundraiser will run until October 30th. And the holidays are a time to spend with our loved ones, but also a time to think about the less fortunate. Operation Christmas Child is an initiative to fill shoeboxes with toys, school supplies and hygiene products to be delivered to children in less privileged parts of the world. Lloydminster was actually one of the first cities to be a part of Operation Christmas Child. It started in 1993-94 and uh, has... Uh, amounted to well over 100 million children around the world having received a shoebox. Hastings encourages people to include a photo or a Christmas card in the box, a small gesture that means the world to the recipient. I can tell them that every shoebox they have filled uh, significantly impacts the child and that family with that gift of, of love, hope, if you would like to donate, you can pick up a shoebox at Dollar Tree versus Spiros and Silverwood Toyota. Drop off your box at Southridge Community Church before November 19th. Well, two cats are up for adoption in this week's pet project. Boda was surrendered by his owner and is a very loving, relaxed cat. And Slick is a lab cat that loves people. Here's John from the SPCA. This big bundle of love is Boda. Boda came in as an owner's surrender with his two pals who have since been adopted. Now it's Boda's turn to find his forever home. 
Rona is one laid-back cat who just loves to laze around on his scratching post. His favorite pastime is napping, followed closely by eating. He definitely has a big appetite. But don't let his tough-looking exterior fool you. When he's not napping or eating, Boda enjoys sitting on your lap, getting brushed, and receiving some extra cuddles. Boda will be a wonderful lap cat to keep you company on the chilly winter nights. Be sure to visit the SPCA and meet Boda today. If you're looking for a best friend who will love you unconditionally, then you just have to meet Slick. Slick is one cool customer that absolutely adores people. The minute you meet him, he'll be purring with delight. Once you sit down, he'll immediately be on your lap, snuggling up to you and kneading his paws on your knees. Slick is such a sweet boy that will melt your heart the minute you meet him. Slick is a feline friend you definitely don't want to miss out on. Stop by the SPCA and meet this wonderful fellow today. This is New Cap Sports. Well, the NHL video game series can be a fun source of healthy competition between two competitors. In this week's Beyond the Boards, Connor Chan finds out who on the Lloydminster Bobcats will come out victorious in a friendly match. NHL 18 is a game meant for everybody, but mostly for hockey players. And Connor, word is you're the undisputed champ. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say, yeah. Number one definitely on the team for ranked. And uh, Jacob, you look to try to end that today. Is that what you're hoping for? Uh, yeah, to be honest, uh, played Connor once and barely beat me. So, I mean, I'm here, to, I'm here to take, I'm here to take the, I'm here to take it. So, win to win, win to win. I'll take them. Gentlemen, I will remind you, this is television. Let's keep language clean, but everything else is fair game. All right. are ready and so are we. Stastny's the starting center for the Blues. Zibanejad's his opposite number. Up and the pass just goes wide. Score! And the place goes Oh, wide. yeah. There's a big one, right off the start. He is oh, Franco. <laughs> no. Right ahead, good pass. Score! Oh, oh yeah. Woo! Even. even. Eat it. The Rangers have even the game here. Still good use of the stick, broke that pass up. Brings a shot. Score! And that has to No way! Yeah. No Short way. side, baby. Yes. Yes! Never know. You just been so <laughs> lucky. Power play unit has connected earlier in the game. Oh! Woohoo! Woohoo! I won! Yes! I won! Woo! Uh, no way! No one's, ever, no one's ever taken Odie down. <laughs> Alright, Jacob. In a dramatic overtime win, you actually take down the champ. How does it feel? Uh, to be honest, it feels really, really good. Uh, I didn't expect this to happen, so, yeah. I mean, now I'm going to go brag to everybody tomorrow when I get to the rink. <laughs> Connor, you were taken down by a rookie. How are you feeling? Yeah, a little tough right now. Uh, it, was a, it was a hard loss, right in the confidence, so I have to keep practicing. In a positive, you did tie the game up. Did have a big come from behind. We'll take one point out of it, I guess, but, yeah. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Beyond the Boards. I'm Connor Chan. We'll see you next week. Well, driving, not an art everyone's mastered, and that's more so the case on the golf course. Whether it's a par three, four, or five, it's part of the game that can remove or add strokes. Lance Phillips and Ryan Vaughn are here with some tips to improve your driving on the grass at a golf course. Tips from the Green, episode 12. Lance Phillips along with Ryan Vaughn. We're here at the gorgeous Cold Lake Golf and Winter Club. And of course, Ryan, you're the golf professional here at the Cold Lake Golf and Winter Club. And uh, over these 12, over these 11 weeks, I've learned a lot. Um, <laughs> so this week, get to learn about driving, get to pull out the big dog, yeah. and we get to have some fun. Now, um, you know, driving isn't, it's just not a matter of stepping up to the ball and, and hammering it. There's a lot of technique involved here. and. Uh, you know, I'm hoping you can kind of shed some light on what the best tips are to get the best out of your drive. Yeah, you bet. It's the longest club in our bag, so it's, it's for a lot of players, it's the most difficult club in our bag. Um, you know, we can make clean contact with the ball, but a lot of the time, the golf ball is going right. A lot of players slice the golf ball. <laughs> and we're just going to talk today about uh, setting up to the ball, square to the ball, making sure our shoulders, our, our feet are, are lined up to the golf ball. Um, first thing you want to think about 
is when you tee up that golf ball, that bottom of the ball should be near the top of the club face. Okay. Um, if you can, if you get it, if you get the club too low, you're going to hit the hit the ball too thin. Okay? okay, which puts a little bit more spin on it as well. So from that point forward, you know, address the ball. We've been talking about keeping the ball in the center of our stance. Mm -hmm. With the with the longest club in our bag, we're going to allow for a little bit more room, right? So we're going to bring it just into the inside of our front foot. Okay. Okay. Position myself so my hands, my club sits naturally. Okay. My sh and my shoulders are square. You're going to see a lot of amateur players try to open up. Yep. And when as soon as they as soon as they open up, I create a new line and my shoulders are pointed left, right? Well, when you do that and the hands get a little forward, the club face actually turns to the right. So when you swing and going back to the slice, that ball is kind of, the, the club is cutting across the ball, which puts that left to right spin on it. Right. I sliced it a bit. Just a five yard fade. Very yeah. playable shot. So what, What? I mean, I felt like I was lined up properly. Do you think I just opened up a bit too much when I came through on the on the shot? Absolutely. A lot of players lead with their upper body, okay. which causes the shoulders and the hands to open up. Interesting. Right? Okay. So, and that's why you see a lot of, like, even, even good players hit, hit controlled fades, right? I was trying to watch your body there and see what your what your body was doing, and it looked like you had. I, and I might be wrong here, but it looked like you had led through your hips more than anything. Lead with your the downswing starts with the with the hips. Yep. And it's not a lot of guys are going to want to shift. Okay. Where we're actually trying to turn our lower body okay. and let the upper body stay behind the golf ball. Got it. And that's how you hit a perfect drive. <laughs> Fairly straight that time. <laughs> Ryan, thanks once again. Yeah. More tips from the green coming next week. How to hit a draw. That should be fun here with Ryan Bond at the Cold Lake Golf and Winter Club.